Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Massive movement. Check this out. Lots of XRP moving. This is the title from a, a, a brand new daily hodl piece. It's titled Crypto Trader Moves 250 Million XRP in Volatile Market. And so the, the timing of this, given the crash yesterday in terms of price, uh, has got uh, people taking note. And uh, before I get into this, I will say uh, just a little hint up front. This wasn't Ripple. This is a crypto trader. This was not Ripple. So I'll get into the piece in just a second here, just kind of setting the table. Uh, I also want to take this as an opportunity to talk a little bit, especially with the ridiculous level of turbulence in the crypto market uh, since yesterday. And I know, it's, what is XRP at now? I think last I looked, it had recovered a little bit. I don't know if it's at 24 cents right now. It doesn't really matter too much for the sake of this video, but I wanted to, to get into the idea of... Um, First of all, the correlation in terms of price action between Bitcoin and XRP, because I'm going to share with you in this video um, insights from two different chart analysts with completely different ideas uh, in terms of the direction that the market's going. Uh, there's, there's one chart analyst that thinks that Bitcoin is going to be retested at around $3,000. Yes, we're talking about going back to uh, where, where, what was the, the bottom market was, what was that mid-December of last year? That's where this chart analyst thinks it, it's going. You can imagine what that would do for not just XRP price, but every other crypto. Everything would tank like, my God, I, I don't even want to know what that would look like. And uh, but but there's another chart analyst who says no the uh, the macro bull trends uh, for uh, for Bitcoin are still intact and so given that I I don't know how to read charts I'm not going to pretend to to know how to read charts I'm not a phony baloney type of guy and I also have no interest in learning how to read charts I'm just going to share with you uh, opinions from people that. Uh, have followings and, and seem to know what they're talking about, even if they have completely contrasting points of view. So I'm going to talk about that. And then the last thing I'm going to cover in this video, it's a completely unrelated topic. I just, just found fascinating. So uh, given it's not related to price or XRP, I'm saving it for the very end. And it is uh, titled, Bitcoin is the obvious choice if U.S. government stops printing money, claims shapeshift CEO Eric Voorhees. Now, before we get rolling here, if you would please delicately tap that like button, and if you're a fan of Ripple and XRP, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel. I promise, I won't bite. It's safe here. We're all friends. So, uh, into the first piece here, lots of XRP moving. So, a flurry of crypto whale activity continues in the wake of Tuesday's big crypto crash, as traders moved 37,225 Bitcoin worth about $325.5 million at time of sale, a holder of a huge amount of XRP surfaced, transferring 250 million XRP worth $67 million between two unknown wallets. So far, the trader has not moved the crypto to a spot exchange where it could be traded on the open market. And you can say, uh, here's the, uh, the whale alert on the screen. And uh, the wallet in question does not appear to be tied uh, to Ripple, which owns about 60% of the total supply of XRP. On Monday, Ripple appeared to sell uh, 21 million XRP worth uh, 5.5 million. Now that's uh, that's some good timing on their part, I suppose, the day before the uh, before that crash. But um, I, I don't know who this is, but uh, man, it's. What? That's gigantic, right? Normally when I see these huge amounts, I'm like, oh, it's probably a Ripple, right? And so I hopped into this article. I was like, oh, my God, it seems to not be Ripple. Uh, so what is the intent here? Again, it's not on an exchange. So what's the purpose of moving this XRP? Is it being positioned for something else? So anyway, and then the piece states uh, the XRP was sent from Ripple's uh, over. Oh, yeah, this is uh, now I'm referencing uh, Ripple's. Uh, the sale of 21 million XRP worth 5.5 million. So the XRP was sent from Ripple's over-the-counter distribution wallet, which is used to sell the digital asset to third-party companies like crypto exchanges and institutions. Ripple loaded up the OTC wallet with 30 million XRP about an hour before the sale. Uh, Ripple is pushing back after facing a backlash from a number of XRP investors for selling portions of his XRP holdings each month. Um, yeah, I don't want to get into that topic any further. I've, I've talked about that ad nauseum as of late. And I got to tell you, it's, uh, it wasn't a bunch of XRP investors. It was a, a minority that caught the attention of crypto media. But almost nobody in the, in the XRP community 
has any serious qualms with the way in which XRP is is being uh, sold by Ripple. I mean, it's their holdings and whatever. All right, let's go ahead and hop into the next piece here now. So here's a here's a tweet from actually I think I wanted to share this one first. Yeah, here we go. So this is from MPC here. This is the uh, the chart analyst, one of the chart analysts I'm going to be. Uh, Whose, whose content I'm going to be covering in this video. So he's got almost 30,000 followers, and he tweeted this out. It's interesting that so many cryptocurrencies are breaking down below major support of their charts on their charts at the exact same time. With Bitcoin, it's the 21-week moving average. With Litecoin, it's the 50-week moving average. With XRP, it's the rising log channel. There are many others, too. And so that's more of just an observation, but check out what he said here. Uh, crypto signs point to a 3K retest, important conditions inside. So I wanna cover part of this. Um, it's, it's a pretty long analysis, so I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but I just wanna get the sentiment across. And this, so this is a, a bear case being made by this chart analyst, and then I'm gonna show you the bull case. I have no idea who's right or which direction this is going. Uh, hopefully not down to uh, to $3,000 for Bitcoin, because I, I just, I'm confident that the entire crypto asset class would tank. Although, who knows, if you're the type that uh, likes to accumulate while everybody else is panicking, it could be a fantastic opportunity. If this actually happens, I, I won't pretend to know. So I'm just going to, again, state the cases and you can, you can decide for yourself. So anyway, MPC here writes, Well, if you followed me for a while, you may remember a notorious Bitcoin chart that I published on May 27th called Bitcoin is Linear and this is a bear market rally. In that analysis, I showed a glimpse of why I believe that Bitcoin moves in a remarkably linear fashion that most people have not discovered. In that analysis, I showed that I thought that Bitcoin would be around $3,000 by October 9th, or somewhere near then, if, the continued, if it continued to move in its historically linear pattern. If you would like to see that analysis, it is linked below. In addition to the linear nature of Bitcoin, there are several other danger signs that point to a potential return to the $3,000 range. As I've said on many occasions, Bitcoin never retested the rising log arc in blue after forming a bear market bottom in December of 2018. You can see that every single time Bitcoin reached the top of the arc, it always retraced to the bottom before making a new high. Uh, that happened in 2011, 2013 to 2015, and now it may be happening yet again as Bitcoin has not touched the bottom of the rising arc since it touched the top in 2017. If history is any indication, Bitcoin should touch the bottom of the arc again before making a new all-time high. Right now, that is in the $3,000 range, the same area that the linear nature of Bitcoin project projects, uh, price, projects price to uh, return to in the future. So there you go, and he has a lot more to this, so I, I, I'm going to stop there because I just wanted to share the sentiment. If you want to get into more of the reasons and the, the, the technical reasons behind that, feel free to check out this piece on TradingView from him, but that's the sentiment right there. And again, I'm not uh, I, I'm not going to pretend to know which way this is going. I just I find this stuff fascinating, and I, I hope you agree it makes for interesting video content, and you can kind of make your own decision there. Now here's here's the bull case though, and so this is by Scott Melker from Coin Telegraph, and here's it's titled "Bitcoin Price Multiple Time Frames Show Macro Bullish Trend Intact," and I'm going to read just just some parts of this. It's long, and some of this gets a little bit too technically wonky for me, but. Uh, Let's get into it. So Bitcoin price made a strong downside move yesterday, dropping nearly 16% from the daily open at $9,691 to a new local low at $8,164. In doing so, price broke strong support at $9,090 and exited the range that it has been trading in since June. Bitcoin's price action remains bearish below this range. Uh, there were three patterns widely identified by traders on the Bitcoin chart, the descending triangle, descending uh, channel, and bull pennant. Bitcoin bears pointed to the descending triangle on the chart for the reason behind the drop. This pattern was technically unconfirmed on candle charts. However, the line chart, which only accounts for candle closes, showed a confirmed uh, descending triangle, uh, two opposing touches up and down, with a much higher horizontal base than was being drawn on candle charts. 9,481 rather than 9,090 uh, savvy traders were able to catch the breakdown uh, $300 ahead of most by utilizing the line chart. Uh, Bitcoin bulls viewed this uh, corrective move as a return to the EQ, 
uh, dashed center line of the descending channel that confirmed weeks ago on the chart. Uh, price remained above this center line for over a month. Bulls will want to see this area recaptured to indicate likely price appreciation, which it seems to be where they think it's going here. Um, and I don't read this whole thing. I think there was another, let me scroll down just a little bit. I feel like there might have been something else I wanted to read here, and I can't recall now when I was prepping before the recording this video. Uh, maybe this part. Yeah, so Bitcoin bull markets are marked by drops of roughly 40%, and the current drop from 2019 high is 41.17%. And at the top of the anticipated range, this process has taken longer than previous corrections in a, a bull market. But anyway, they're stating here that it's it's the norm. And I mean, it, as bizarre as that would sound in any other asset class, this absolutely does seem to be the norm here. And so um, I don't want to get into too much more technical stuff here, but... The, the, the sentiment being here that it's business as usual in reading through this. So there you go. Two completely opposing viewpoints. What do you think is going to happen? What do you want to happen? Would you love to see it tank so that you have a buying opportunity? Or would that just scare the bejesus out of you and you just want it to ideally go a little bit more in the, the, the northern direction? You know, um, Man, I don't know. Ugh. All right, let's hop into the next piece here. This is from AMB Crypto. Bitcoin is the obvious choice if U.S. government stops printing money, claims Shapeshift CEO Eric Voorhees. Uh, libertarianism and Bitcoin go hand in hand as the latter complements and strengthens the former's vision. Prominent Bitcoin supporter, libertarian, and Shapeshift CEO Eric Voorhees featured in Peter McCormick's podcast to con uh, contrast the U.S. and U.K. government's position in allowing slash regulating crypto. While talking about the expected financial crash, Voorhees strongly suggested that the governments must change their existing policies one at a time. And here's a quote from him. Let's change education, policing, regulations, or a part of welfare. If you actually pick something and change that, I think that's practical. Maybe I have zero faith in the political system. And then the piece continues. Moreover, Voorhees speculated that Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies will take over the world uh, over time as people tend to hold value in the thing that can't be debased. He further believed that the government won't be able to just print money to subsidize its spending, which will in turn force the institutions to reduce its spending. And he said, quote, you get rid of, pr uh, you get rid of print and, by definition, you force the government to be smaller. Bitcoin is therefore the obvious likely choice. But I don't think anyone could assume that it is uh, impossible that a different crypto surpasses Bitcoin. And I, I like that he acknowledges that last part because I, I find it infinitely unlikely that Bitcoin will stay number one in market cap forever. It just doesn't make any damn sense to me. And the technology is so inferior relative to superior coins like XRP, for example. Uh, it, it just it, it can't be used as money. It's like effectively, people have not figured out a way to effectively use a Bitcoin as money. And even the Lightning Network, even if it works, like I keep saying, it's a centralized solution requiring pre-funding of accounts. It's like cryptocurrency Nostra Vostra accounts. It's ridiculous. Anyway, and then the piece wraps up by stating the average entrepreneur ended the conversation by pointing out the rising differences between the U.S. governments and its citizens while stating it as the uh, inevitable outcome of centralization of power. The only way to neutralize the issue was redirected to U.S. government's bankruptcy through a bond market collapse, which will happen in our lifetime probably relatively soon. So there's a rosy outlook, right? <laughs> All right, I better wrap up this video. Uh, I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say all right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau!